so it's been over 24 hours now since I brought home four baby mice, wild mice, and I now feel like I can sit down and document it. I did want to document from the start, but yesterday was just chaotic, you know, getting a mess out of the blue, like, can you hand rear four baby mice? And then having to find out how the fuck to hand rear four baby mice. Because I'm a rat girl. Now, yes, rats and mice are both rodents. Even if it was baby rats, like, I still don't know how to hand rear them. Uh, so, it was a lot of cramming, a lot of trying to figure things out, joining Facebook groups, getting advice. And I just, I, you know, I wasn't in the swing of things. I have to feed them every two hours. So, you know, picking the camera up at 4 a.m. while trying to learn how to feed these guys was it's not a priority. But I feel quite settled now. As I say, it, it's now like half past 10 on Tuesday. So, like, I've had a good few feeds under my belt. They've lasted 24 hours. I'm feeling quite good. I just want to document it for myself because, like, it's a cool thing, like, I'm hand-rearing an animal, a wild animal, four of them. Um, obviously, they're gonna become pets. I kinda, like, I, I, I literally don't know <laughs> about mice. I'm currently watching Emmyology's 20 Things You Should Know Before Owning Mice video, which I have watched before, but it was just because I had, like, watched all of her rat content and was like, I'll just watch this, but didn't take it in because I had no plans to have mice in my possession. So now I'm like watching all of her content, finding out like do you live in groups, like like I think boys can't live together, but like I I, I don't know. So I'm gonna learn. Potentially, I'm gonna have to keep one or all or I don't know. As again, don't know how they live. Uh, I've got a few weeks to figure it out. Um, but I just I just want to document it, especially as someone who like wants to revolve their life around animals in some way like I think it'd be really cool in like 40 years when I live on a fucking zoo to be like oh look where I started so hi welcome to novella figuring shit out as she goes along doing well I do have a good support system um, I'm communicating with a woman who had a rat rescue who has hand reared mice and rats before both wild and domestic i believe there's also a local wildlife rescue who i'm in contact with they are overrun with animals right now which is why they don't have the mice because obviously while i am loving this experience and wanted this experience the animals come first and i just want to make that clear um if for whatever reason you have baby animals that you're not experienced with even if you're slightly experienced with like but if you haven't done it before like if you haven't hand reared before do try everything because obviously you have to experience it to get experience like now that i've done it if somebody was like i need someone to do this like i kind of know what i'm doing um it's for the animal's best interest you know what i mean like they these guys all the rescues didn't take mice told us to leave them in a box to die and then the one that does take mice are really fucking busy um, but they know I have rats and stuff and they were like if we give you the advice you know we know you're willing to do it and you're willing to learn like can you help us out like if you're really stuck we will take them but you know they were basically they were basically just like yeah we'll take them but you volunteer you be the volunteer that does it kind of thing so you know just a little disclaimer there like please don't just go and take in animals um it's not easy. Like, I know I seem quite happy and upbeat right now, but again, it's been one night and one day. I like my sleep. So, who knows how I'm gonna be tomorrow in a couple days when I'm, you know, I've got four of them to feed. So if I feed them at midnight, they're due their next feed at 2 a.m. But by the time I've fed them all, eliminated them all, eliminating being making them pee and poo because they are that small they can't do it themselves so there's 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 a fun fact for you if you're thinking this is a fun job it's not just cuddling small animals it's it's work um i say that it's not anyway point being by the time i've done that and like cleaned up it could be like one half one and then i've got to get their milk ready to feed them at two like it's it's a lot but as i say like so far I'm enjoying the experience. It's really nice to see them grow. I'm aware I haven't shown you them yet. Here's to documenting these little bubbles. They are currently in this pets at home tank cage 
thing uh, that does say it's suitable for mice. We'll find out. I like. I don't. I don't trust pets at home. Uh, but yeah, they are. They're in there. They're in a bit of a food coma. So I have slacked on filming today, even though we've had quite a eventful day. Um, so this morning I decided to try these guys on some soaked Cheerios. So I soaked some Cheerios in their formula and they absolutely loved it. To the point that they now don't want to eat from the toothbrush, uh, not the toothbrush, sorry, the paintbrush. Which is great. Um, they were starting to like eat from bowls. They even had some cucumber. Like they were kind of weaning to solids, which is great. And then they ate too fast. And I believe it is actually this little one here. I don't know what my camera is doing focus wise, but um, you you can kind of see your belly's a little bit round. Her belly's a little bit more roundy. It is actually looking quite a little bit better. Um, so not not great bloat can be fatal it's basically where like air's gotten into them so it happens um if they're suckling and sometimes like if they're with a syringe and they take an air um eating too much like, i'm not an expert we've established this um but yeah so basically they've just kind of had a little bit too much food ate a little bit too quickly um I also was a little bit slacky on their tummy rubs today. I've honestly forgotten what I filmed, but basically you, when you feed them, you've got to massage their belly to help everything sort of digest and go down and keep things moving. So I was a little bit slacky. Um, maybe could have done it a couple, like either done it longer when I was doing it or done it a few extra times. Um, it's a learning curve. It's just one of those things. So I've been sitting pretty much consistently just now like rubbing their bellies um cotton buds and i've got a homemade like electrolyte more like a hydration and electrolyte uh, solution just sugar salt and water uh because i don't have any actual electrolyte powder at the minute i was looking for it today i was out today and i was like i need to buy that couldn't see it now i need it uh, but they've got that because basically the two the two they're bloated one's very bloated the one I showed you the other one's like okay um, They won't be getting any formula at least for tonight. I know that sounds really drastic because that's their food uh, But the cold will kill them first then dehydration then starvation so they can go about 24 hours without the formula I only plan to go. I think it's like nearing 10 o'clock around 10 hours so if, if that obviously it depends on how 
their stomachs go but it's just going to be sitting keeping them warm and doing a lot of stomach massages i was really panicky at first i'm now now that i'm like calmed down and i'm like know what i'm doing and like what i need to do i'm feeling a little bit better they, they seem fine um the particularly bloaty one b uh she was like wandering about she was wandering out the cage to where i had the soaked cheerios sitting and some cucumber so i think like she's looking for more food so like she's obviously feeling all right um i just went into like oh my god like ah but we're good i am just in panic mode like obviously they're babies they're sleeping um but i see them sat like that and i'm like are you okay even though like i can see her moving just now so like it's fine but like i do have that like um sir ma'am <laughs> so i thought i was gonna sleep a little bit better tonight but i feel like i'm gonna sleep worse because instead of getting my like usual sort of hours nap between feeds i'm probably just gonna be awake prodding them massaging them but i have a photo of her belly as it is so i can obviously compare it oh hello so yeah i will check on you guys probably tomorrow uh just because as i say it's like 10 o'clock at night i'm tired i gotta put some stuff away i gotta give these creatures some attention these guys need their medication i know this is a mouse video but always got it all i hope you're prepared you know i have male rats now so balls are going to be involved zoom in's very bad quality but those, those are balls you are very welcome for the quality content and as i say i will i will keep you updated uh i think i did i mention see my brain i'm honestly this the 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 sleep thing it's catching up on me i thought it was fine i'm i'm not so i wasn't gonna update tonight it's now midnight uh bloaty girls are doing quite well they've been pooing and whatnot uh this little dude i have given up with autofocus you can do it you can do it you can do it cinderella which is a very apt song hold on it wants to focus on anything but him there we go so this little dude decided to look away from the camera. Come on. Are we not going to show everybody? We opened our eyes. We did. Watch me have the wrong one. No, I have the right one. Well, the camera's focus is abysmal. It wants to focus on my orange juice. But, um, this little guy's opened his eyes. Obviously, he's, like, just on it, so he's a little bit unsure still but want to focus on him this little dude was d um i just gave them letters of the alphabet so a b c d this guy was d and i decided quite early on that i liked him um and I'm pretty sure he's a boy, so I was like, if he is a boy, he's the one I'm going to keep. And I call him Gus. And he's the first to open his eyes, so little Gus Gus. I can also feel people crawling. You can't see them. But they're crawling. <laughs> so... Anyway, they're getting a bit cold now, so I'm gonna put them in their cage for a couple hours and then nighttime feeds. It is Friday morning, it's about 10 a.m. And as you can see, the beans have a slightly different. Oh, hello. <laughs> oh, it's a big stretch. Oh my goodness. Oh, are you looking for milk? Well, go find it because it's in the bowl. You big, 
you picked Mousy. You can go find it yourself. Um, yeah, you can see we have a bit of a change in the cage. <laughs> Sorry, this little guy, girl. <laughs> they now have towel in their cage because they're starting to get little bowls of food rather than syringe feeding. This means they can go and feed whenever they want, which I'm slightly paranoid about because like they could go and overfeed. Hold on, let me go move closer to them. So they've got a bowl of diorolite, which is like a dehydration a mixture thing for humans, uh, just so they can have a drink, but it's got a little bit more stuff in it while they're tiny. Some cucumber that I think they've sucked most of the water out of and their milk. There's also some Cheerios dotted around. Hard Cheerios. <laughs> so this means that they can start feeding when they want. They've also got to go and find their food rather than just rolling around like little riots that like you saw uh, looking for mum because I can't keep doing two hourly feeds guys. <laughs> I'm tired. So this stuff gets changed every four hours which is great. This is kind of like the first time it's really been in here, so I am on, well, second time, I've done one change, but I am very much on paranoid mum mode. I've always said that I am like the animal mum and whatever, that it's just like, eh, if you get hurt, you'll learn. But like, obviously these guys, like, if it's your dog, and like, they're playing with another dog and they're not listening to like, the back off signals, and like, if it snaps at you, like, it's your fault, like, obviously I pull my dog away, but like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't panic, but because these guys are like, they could die. <laughs> like, not to be dramatic, but they, they literally could die. So, it's a big thing. And I've been saying this to people, like, you know, when you're in the midst of the two hourly feeds and whatnot, you're like, oh, please just like open your eyes. Please start weaning so I can, like, I can sleep longer. But then when you get to it, it's like, no, let's go back. Because you know then that they're getting what they need. You know, like, you're kind of in control, you're the responsible one. Whereas now I'm kind of like, right, you guys. And, like, obviously I can step in, like, is anyone doing it? You're trying to, like, nibble the towel. So, like, I can pick this little dude. Little dude? Little dude. Little, no, yes, little dude. This is a little boy. Um, I can pick him up and go, look, your food's over here. And he'll do a roly-poly into it and have a little bath in the milk, like Cleopatra. Um, but then, like, you know, he's finding his food, so I can kind of do that, but yeah, it's just, <laughs> it's scary. And as you can see, we go into fabulous little food comas that absolutely scare the shit out of me. And I am constantly poking and prodding them because I'm like, have you died? <sighs> it's not fun. <laughs> but... As you can see, they're like, they're running up by, they're doing pretty good. Oh, is this my gus gus? You got something stuck to your bum. Don't eat the bed and it's left over, please. Oh, I've lost you. There you are. Hi. I think they're enjoying, like, there's like a sort of little, not tunnels, but you know, like, they've got a little bit more stuff to explore. It's going to be really cool when I can, like, actually put stuff in the cage. Like, I could, but, like, again, paranoid mama. <laughs> so it's just really fun watching them grow. I'm giving me heart attacks because they're so soundly asleep on their nice warm heating pads. I know I literally just saw you move, but I'm just gonna thank you. That's all I wanted to know. Um, I have lost one of you. Where are you? This is this is the the, the current situation. Is one, two, three. <laughs> found you but yeah they are doing pretty good what day is this monday monday was like day zero so tuesday wednesday thursday friday we're on day four <sighs> yeah they're doing good as i say i'm just kind of slightly paranoid mama oh your pouch is upside down sorry but we're getting there and i've just got it oh my goodness so dramatic i just have to suck it up, leave them to it, you know what I mean? They've, they've got to learn, is what it is. I mean, look, this, this this guy, gal, I don't know, has just nicked a cheerio. Oh my God, it's just took a cheerio to borrow it. Oh my God, we're going up. Oh my, oh. Listen, I know anyone that's watched my channel for a while, but like maybe hasn't met me in person, is probably like, who the fuck is that being so like, emo? I feel the surprises. But <laughs> when it's animals, honestly, humans can die 
these guys live forever, please. So yeah. Oh my god, look at it carrying it. <laughs> See what I mean? Like they've got access to the formula, but they're like, no. Oh, okay. Oh, focus, now's the time to work, please, because this is really freaking cute. They've got access to formula, cucumber, water, but this guy is like, I want the dry food. So they're getting there. And now I can go take a nap. <laughs> Apparently the camera is napping now too. I don't know what the hell is wrong with this autofocus lately, but so yeah, there's your little Friday update. I will check in at some point. I also thought you guys might want to see how I'm doing. I'm I'm good. It's catching up with me. <laughs> Things I do. It's still Friday. It's about 12 o'clock. <sighs> the two girls. About maybe half an hour ago, I found them <laughs> obviously not breathing. <laughs> Give me a minute. I am very much that person who is like circle of life, you know, especially when it comes to young baby animals and stuff like this. I'm like, look, they die. Um, I was looking after some baby cockatiels and one died overnight. I literally birthed a puppy I think it may have been stillborn or it had passed and when we by the time we'd found it because long story short but I delivered a puppy that passed and like it's fine like I'm okay but I am very sleep deprived <laughs> so this has got me quite hard and it's just like it's one of these things that I think it's so frustrating because we were like out of the danger I was literally saying to people today that after today they're kind of out of the danger zone where it's like you kind of know they're gonna live and it, I literally I because obviously I'm planning to keep Gus and I shouldn't have named him because that's what like honestly my heart dropped because basically the four of them two of them had like red markings on the left hand side two on the right um there's two boys and there two boys and two girls so it was like one boy had marking on the left one marking on the right because it was like letters but if it smudged it meant you could kind of figure out who was who um so when i saw that marking on the left hand side i was frantically like trying to figure out if it was the boy or the girl cause, and like obviously there was that relief that it wasn't gus but the absolute fear that i had lost him because i have literally just dropped a hundred pounds on a tank, like a permanent tank for him. And I said to my cousin when I ordered it, I was like, now I'm even more paranoid, like you can't die. And I'm currently sitting like looking at the cage and I can't see them because I'm obviously like burrowed somewhere and I am like shitting it. I'm gonna move them from the chair onto the bed and just like sit and watch them. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, do you know, I had a moment of, oh my god, it's my fault. Like, I think one of them was under the heat mat and overheated, but then one of the boys was there as well and he's okay. You know, it's one of those things where you're like, oh, if I'd done this, if I'd done that, but I know that even then it might still happen sort of thing. Like, it just kind of is what it is. And I just, I don't know, just the sleep deprivation has me finding it very upsetting. But I will have this sob. I'm kind of calming down now. Although this one nostril is completely blocked. That's why I sound like this. <laughs> But yeah, just kind of gotta have my minute, and I'm just gonna focus on these boys. Oh, yeah. But yeah, I'm okay. I'll be okay. I just want to nap, but I can't nap because I gotta watch these boys. It's 8 p.m. I've calmed down. I am incredibly tired. I'm sure anyone. Who knows, like when you have a cry sesh, it usually makes you quite tired. Um, so when you're already sleep deprived, it's it's great. I also realised I haven't really ate today because of my tiredness. I've just kind of forgot food exists. So I have chips and cheese and uh, some jumbo sausage from the chippy. I'm going to watch some Criminal Minds. Um, my man Spencer Reed is right there. Oh, it's hard to zoom in on him. The camera, the camera knows we love the man. Um, the babies, the boys, oh, we have one there and one squishing himself to eat a Cheerio. Um, oh, I just realised the focus is completely out. What a shock that all. As you can see, alive and kicking, looking for some food. 
Um, so I'm going to chuck in a little bit of Cheerio for them, just to give them something. Um, and I'm going to eat myself because I'm not going to eat myself, I'm going to eat. my I myself am going to eat. Um, so yeah, all good so far. The camera, oh you're in the, oh hello. Listen, I'm so tired. The shoddy camera work, I, 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 oh foxy, tired. This is why you have wrist straps. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm going to, I'm going to go eat and survive. Good morning. It's about 10 a.m. on Sunday. Um, I'm currently feeding Gus. Yesterday was a lot. Um, unfortunately, the other boy started to choke. Um, there was like something in his throat that I pulled out, but like he must have aspirated by eating too fast. I, I, I don't know what happened, um, but he passed. So we just have a little Gus Gus left. Um, shockingly, the focus is off, but we shall fix it. Trisha wants to focus on the cage, but like back here, doesn't it? But, like, this is the priority, my friends. There we go. So, little Gus Gus is holding in there. Um, I'm really frustrated because I'm in a couple different, like, groups. I'm in one group in particular which is like for orphaned wild mice. It's to like teach you to how, how like not teach you, but it's like for advice on hand rearing and stuff. And just so much of it's been conflicting. Um, so he gets a puppy milk formula. This currently has something called weight up baby in it, which is like for rats when they're sick. Um, just to try and build his weight up. Because last night he started to like limp. It looked really weird. And I was paranoid. Like I honestly thought I'd like broke his leg or broke his like I, I thought I'd done something to like really hurt him so you can imagine that was absolutely terrifying and like t this morning like I've obviously sorted him out he was just tired because he had some bloat um so he did a massive shit yesterday oh my god you should like I know very few people will be as invested in that sort of thing as I am but like holy crap it was it was like nearly the size of him um but like what's really frustrating is like people were like oh you know because of the bloat and whatnot he's probably been tired so like that's great put some electrolytes in him blah 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 but then you get people comment who are like oh he's tired he also looks really thin he needs more food and it's like but in the group they tell you to only feed them five percent of their body weight so like that's what i started doing and funnily enough it's one of those things where like when i started to feed them like the the five percent of their body weight which was less than what they've been used to because the overfeeding can cause bloat and bloat can kill them um that's kind of when shit started to go downhill so it's that thing where i'm like should i just kept feeding them as i was like maybe the overfeeding caught up with like there's so many things like i can't dwell on it and think on it and whatever um have you had enough this morning nearly um but yeah it's usually frustrating when people are like oh this is the cause of this and then like you know when someone says to you oh it's probably caused by this that happened because of this thing that you've now changed and people were like oh see that change you've made yeah that's caused it and it's like you know i'm in a rock and a hard place i'm like do i feed him more do i feed like keep feeding him less like do you know what what, what one is the cause how do i know what is the right thing to do for him um but i've had more people tell me he doesn't look like someone said he looked emaciated and he's, he's not like He's really not that bad. Um, it's hard because he does have um, a bit of a scruffy look to him just now because basically formula fed babies will lose their fur again. Um, so he's going a little bit bald up top like me. <laughs> Are you going bud? You had enough. So, you know, it's just, it's one of those things. Have I left the lid for this down the stairs? Like an absolute dumbo. I have. Amazing. Amazing. I have to go downstairs again. You know, it's just, it's really difficult figuring out the best thing to do for him. But he's here. He's still here and he's got a lot of fight. Like, he's he's absolutely pelting it about today. Like, I'm just trying to spend, like, two minutes to open this hot water so I can give him a little tummy massage to avoid more bloat. And he's running about, like no one's business right but go back in your carrier for a second <laughs> so yeah it's been a stressful day or so it is what it is we can only just keep going as we are 
we are down to one which in theory should be easier because like i only have to worry about him i don't have to try and like feed four of them it's still not very fun you know i'm trying to like do this in like a, a way that i can still like have a good grip on him but like let you guys see i'm just using a wet cotton bud warm water to rub his belly just to help him shit you know uh what a wonderful wonderful experience and he'll start squeaking because if he's a little bit backed up Obviously, if you're being backed up, press your stomach, it can be a bit painful. It's just been really stressful. Like, obviously, I only want to do what's best for them, and then you've got multiple people telling you different things. But I can just let him tell me kind of what he wants and just hope for the best. So, obviously, by the time this video is up, he will either be grown or, you know, um... I, I need this little bugger to make it. Like, I can't express to you how much I need him to pull through. But I'm trying not to, like, get my hopes up because, you know, he's a tiny, tiny baby and I can do everything perfectly and they can still just go. So we've just got to do the best we can for him. And if he wants to be here, he'll be here. So, yeah. That is pretty much all I wanted to update this morning and I'll maybe check in a little bit later. But I'm going to go focus on his little tummy massage. Let's see if I can make you, I don't want to make him squeak but it is really cute when he squeaks. You going to squeak? So it's about half past 11 on Monday. I have officially had Gus Gus for a whole week and he's still going strong. My bed is covered in bedding and food and who knows what. Um, he's really starting to turn into a little mouse now. You can see his ears are like starting to poke up. He's gone through his little scruffy stage. Well, he's going through it, but um, he's starting to kind of even out it seems. So, as you can see, he's kind of just sitting here right now. He has just had a little bit to eat. Um, but also, because, you know, his eyes are opening a lot more, um, they're pretty much fully open at this point. He is kind of getting into that mouse stage. Mice don't like wide open spaces. They like to kind of be curried in, burrowed. So, you know, he's kind of getting to that point now where if I put him down in the open space, he's a bit like, not really sure about this. Um, so, obviously, I, I try and not do it. <laughs> too often so yeah Gus still here doing good hello it's Thursday the 5th of August now um I have had an absolutely mental week I I don't know what I last updated you guys this is gonna be like my sort of finale for this video because little Gus Gus um he's still in his little temporary home because his tank arrives at the weekend but he is doing so well. Let me see if I can find him. He might be in his bed. Hold on, I'll be back. So little Gus Gus doesn't want to get focused on again as usual. Um, he's got some bed and stuck to him. But you can see he's starting to do really well. His eyes are pretty much fully opened. And he's a proper little mousy. So we're just waiting on his enclosure coming so he can be put into that. But... He doesn't really need a heat pad anymore. He's pretty much just solely eating from dishes in his cage. I do have a little dish of, it's not, well no, it's, it's formula mixed with some weight up baby from the rat warehouse, which is what you give to like sick rats to help them gain weight. Um, he has a little bit of it, but he's a lot more interested in the mix and just any other little bitty treats that he gets. Um, I even found him drinking some water from a water bowl. He's not really figured out the water bottle yet, but we're getting there, aren't we, bud? So we're still waiting like on his coat properly, like eat, cleaning out, easing out. We're waiting on his coat to like look good. Like you can still kind of tell he's got a little bald spot on his face from his scruffy stage, 
but he's doing well. He's hopping about, he's very energetic, he's choosing to sleep in a little burrow rather than where the heat pad was, which is why he's no longer using that. Poops by himself, everything. Like, he's doing so, so good. Um, he is only about three weeks though, so obviously there is still every chance of just sudden death, really. Um, but I'm definitely not as anxious as I have been, so yeah that's kind of it for this vlog and I'll probably do something for when I'm setting up his cage or whatever um but yeah I didn't update anytime sooner because as I say I've had a very hectic week for a start my dog Hector uh took a severe allergic reaction to something on Monday and a lot of local news wanted to pick up the story they've kind of ran with the idea that it's giant hogweed but a uh, long story short this video will will it be up by tomorrow it might be, if I get my, my shit together tonight, I could have it up. But um, I, me and Hector are going to be on ITVs this morning to talk to Dr. Scott. Um, I'm hoping just about general allergic reactions because it will be really awkward if they're like, so yeah, it was giant hogweed. And I'm like, no, <laughs> no, it wasn't. But uh, yeah, something else also happened this week, but I'm about to go and do a separate video on that. Um, all I'll say is it will be a similar type of video to this, like this whole like raising Gus situation. So look out for that one. I might do a short, short video being like, this is going on. Um, but yeah, that that's it. Um, I have no idea how, oh, you've pooped, thank you. I've no idea how this video is gonna turn out if it's, I, like, I knew what I wanted to be in my head and I know it's not turned out like that at all. It's became more of a vlog than like anything informa informational, informative. Um, but I hope you guys like it. Um, you're gonna go back in your cage. He, he's in teenage stage where he's like, I don't need you, mum. Like, I don't need you. Go away. But you do. Which also, <laughs> to end this, um, if I take nothing away from this experience, um, of hand rearing some baby mice. I have learnt that wild field mice smell really fucking nice. <laughs> Maybe. Okay, it could be because he's been sleeping on a t-shirt of mine that was washed. But like I've only noticed it in the last two days when his fur's been better. So I don't know. But uh, there you have it. Gus smells really good and fingers crossed that he continues to do really well for at least another year. Um, I believe wild mice should make about two to three years so here's hoping you get a lot of Gus videos in your futures. So he's just chilling. You want to go in? Maybe we'll do a little montage of you in your cage if I can be bothered. Probably not.